afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. And guess what, guys? Got another Class C in that we're going to review today. And I've been we've been buying a lot of these Class Cs. They're hot right now, guys. Really are with fuel prices like they are. People start to look at these smaller Class Cs over the Class As, and so we've been we've been going where the market's telling us to go, and that's carrying more Class Cs. Uh, this particular one, guys, is another ultra low mileage, late model Class C that's going to save you a ton of money over a brand new one. I mean, don't go out and spend 120 grand on a brand new one. This is a 2017 Jayco Red Hawk. Uh, models a 26XD, and this is a double slide, 28 foot long. So it's a medium sized Class C. Um, very nice one, 19,000 miles. Built on a Ford E450 chassis. Got the 305 horsepower Triton V10. We're gonna drive it later in the video, don't worry. If I can get a salesperson to go with me. Knee deep Michelin tires, and that's pretty deep. That's deeper than, knee deep, deeper than, uh, deeper than ankle deep, let's just say that. Still got the tabs on them. 4KW on end generator running right now. Roof air is cold, dash air is cold power awning works great does have the j-ride which i don't think i've ever filmed me driving one before with the j-ride the jail j-ride is on top of the stock e450 chassis suspension you've got the Hellwig helper springs you've got the computerized balance drive shaft the rubberized body mounts and the computer and, and i think all that together gives you a better ride now, is it going to be like life-changing, toe-curling, best ride you ever had in a Class C? Probably not, but we'll find that out together later in the video. But I think it will make a, a big difference between just a stock E450 uh, suspension on a regular motor home. And you can see, guys, no HD Max fade. Does have a 7,500-pound towing capacity on the hitch. I don't recommend putting that much on a E450 chassis. I know the specs say that you can do it. I would probably max it out at 6,000 just to be safe. I mean, if you buy it at your motor home, you do what you want to, but that's just from my personal experience. You do have all frameless windows. Good looking motor home too, guys. And it's a, it's, it's a great size. It's not too big, not too small. 330 hours on the generator. We just drove it several hundred miles in. Notice the overlapping cap. These are well, well built Class C motor homes. Look how the overlapping cap is on the cab over. Most leak problems occur in Class C's where you have straight edges with seams on it like right here. This one has no straight edge. Notice the seams are underneath the cab over. Really no leak issues to worry about, no windows. You know, side windows are okay, but you really don't want one with front windows. Got that good looking forward front end and y'all pardon my chicken scratch. The guy that does that is out for a couple weeks. So I've been having to ride on these things and I, my riding's not the best in the world riding on these windshields. But hey, nobody, I got nobody else here to do it. So I think you get the idea. Um, awning looks good, just a little dirty, which we'll wash it. Power steps work great, slide out works great. Let's look inside this 26XD Jayhawk. Steps work great. Whew, getting a little warm outside, guys. We had some rain earlier, and um, which cooled it off for a little bit, but now it's back up in the 90s. But between that dash air on high that's blowing cold in the root the 15,000 BTU roof air it's doing a pretty good job um you know considering I just had it on for a little bit 19,083 miles that's not even broken in for a V10 guys backup camera works great dash looks great no smoke or pet odors in the camper power mirrors uh power windows tilt crews all that good stuff again we're we are going to bring the rooms in and drive it here at the end of the video so stay tuned for that 
um, if one of my salespeople are available. If not, I'll try to do it myself. Um, full size, full the queen size bed in the cab over. Um, just flip this down. And that makes your bed a little bigger than a full, a little smaller than a queen. Use queen size sheets, of course. Power, which kind of silly having that over a manual uh, swivel, but hey, you didn't pay for that. The original owner probably paid thousand dollars for that. So, um, got some little storage shelves right here. Sleeper sofa, no flaking furniture. This makes a bed. You have a table booth that makes a bed. So this is an eight sleeper and a 28 footer. That's really nice. Only light that's burned out is this one right here above the sink. Um, double basin sink. Three burner stove top. Eight cubic foot RV refrigerator freezer, which had on a little bit and uh starting to get cold it's starting to get cold in the back guys i mean it's safe enough that i can say it works and we do guarantee it anyway got the 15,000 btu ducted roof air on it does have a queen bed in the corner but guys when you bring this slide out in to drive it you can't use this bed uh this mattress i'll show you real quick just kind of flips up out of the way so that you can bring your room in and um and be able to do that so you know that's one thing about it but you still have your couch your table booth and then your overhead bed that you can uh that you can sleep in without without putting your room out or just take a few seconds push your button bring the room in or out so it's no big deal to do that you don't even have to have 110 power to do it I know people get kind of finicky about what's it look like with the rooms in, but you know, the only thing you need to know is you got access to your bathroom when the slide outs are in. If somebody else is driving, you got to go to the bathroom, which you do. You know, if you stop somewhere to sleep, you're going to just take a few seconds above your slide out. It's no big deal. I doubt you're going to be somewhere that's so tight you can't put a, an 18 inch slide out. Uh, big closet right here some drawer space underneath it um you've got the cool jets on your a on your ac which i'll go ahead and close so i get more air to the duct work you know this is a great um you know and one reason why class c's are doing so good right now guys is they are a little bit better on fuel than a class a you know a little bit better but the fact is these are smaller motor homes. You can camp in these away from the campgrounds a little easier. You know, if you're in like a primitive campground, a free campground, BLM land, um, you know, uh, boondock camping is a little easier to do with a class C than a big class A. Um, Cause you know, campground, I'm not gonna lie, campgrounds are crowded, everybody's getting an RVing in record numbers. So of course that means, you know, a lot more people's buying RVs than campgrounds that are being built so a lot of people are, are buying the smaller ones so that they have options they can go to campgrounds they can boondock camp this is a size motorhome you can get into a lot of the free public campgrounds uh, without hookups i mean you've got a generator this thing also has a thousand watt inverter which would be good maybe to run your refrigerator run a tv something like that it's not going to run an ac of course you need about three thousand watts minimum to do that um probably need more than that but as a very very minimum you need at least three or 3500 watt inverter to run an ac and a heck of a battery bank because if you just do it off one or two house batteries it'll it'll drain it in minutes so um so there's nothing beats that 4000 watt generator as far as you can run that thing for days and days and days and days running that roof air and be comfortable. Um, and it will cut off. See, a lot of people won't realize, but the generator, the, the gasoline generator runs off the main fuel tank and it will cut off around a quarter of a tank. 
and it does that in case you're parked somewhere you don't run all the gas out of your main tanks you still got gas to be able to crank up your motor home and drive it somewhere to fuel up and, and guys i've ran generators before in rvs for a solid week at a time um before and that was back years ago we had the tornadoes come through my hometown and our power was out at home for a week and we pretty much lived in our rv and uh and like i said i ran the uh i ran the generator off and on for a solid week uh because it was in april so it wasn't that hot so uh before i had to get fuel of course i keep my motor home and this is a and this is a little trick guys in case that ever happens to y'all and uh, which kind of sucks but that is one benefit of having a motor home you've always got an emergency shelter with power so if the power is going to be out for several hours middle of summer go outside crank your motor home up you got power you've got ac you've got refrigerator you've got television you've got a bed you've got a bathroom hot water always keep your rv full of fuel and propane i learned that many many years ago just for the emergency shelter part because then you're good and of course when it's not winter time i keep mine full of fresh water too because you never know um but just my little tip because they are they do make great emergency shelters um in case something like that happens and i've been very fortunate so situations like that's only happened a couple of times in my life but you never know especially those y'all that live down in florida where you have hurricanes and power goes out for long periods of time and hot weather at least this way hey this is your emergency shelter air conditioning crank it up turn on that ac and chill literally chill <laughs> um dual purpose vehicle but anyway um this is a nice unit it's a great size for small families for larger families it can sleep eight um it's a great size for a couple it's just one of those all-around floor plans that has multiple uses that multiple multiple style of families or couples can use or even singles can use i mean it's plenty big enough for one person two people four five six um and be fairly comfortable um, it's an easy size to drive, you know, older campgrounds and state parks, a 28 footer, no problem. No problem. Um, you know, it's not going to kill you on gas compared to like a 32 or 33 or a 38 class A or something like that. Yeah. I mean, these things, this is something right here. You're probably going to wind up getting in the eight ish, nine ish miles per gallon. I mean, you are still driving a 28 foot box on wheels down the road. And you might get better than that if you keep your speed down. Um, and, you know, it depends on if you're driving uphill, downhill, tailwind, headwind, if you're towing a car, not towing a toad. You know, there's other factors involved, but uh, my old 25-footer ish, of course, you know, when I did check, I don't, guys, I got to the point where it doesn't bother me. I don't get to drive it that and use it that much. I just put gas in it and go, but. I mean, when I do check it, I, I probably get around eight-ish, eight and a half, roughly nine. Again, I don't drive fast. I very rarely drive 65, 70 on the interstate. 70 is about my top on mine, but I usually cruise around 65 in the right lane. But now, y'all may be different than me. I don't recommend driving a motor home much faster than that because not that it can't do it. It can definitely do it, but you're putting a lot of stress and your motor home's flexing going down the road that's what a lot of people don't realize when you're driving 80 85 in a motor home it's flexing seals are flexing seals can break it can cause leaks you're putting a lot of unnecessary stress on your rv just to get somewhere five minutes faster it's not worth it guys slow down it's safer for you it's better for your rv it's cheaper on fuel enjoy the drive get in that right lane set your cruise control and just enjoy the ride sit back relax um that's part of it guys so many people think that they can drive an rv like they do a car and you can't if you if you can't drive that fast and an rv's or if you can't drive that way then rv may not be the choice for you you might be better off with what i call an h and h a honda in a hotel room 
um, or if you're you know if you're anal about fuel mileage H&H &H, Honda in a hotel room <laughs> but anyway guys <laughs> I I don't hold nothing back about car V's <laughs> the good the bad and the ugly but they are a blast, guys. I mean, you get a pretty sight, pretty weather. I mean, it makes it all worth it. I mean, you, you're in here, you got your own bed, your own sheets, you cook your own food. You're not, you beautiful is outside. You got a beautiful camp spot, have that nice campfire. And then when it's cool enough in the evenings, you know, got kids are out there playing and laughing and fishing and, and, and doing hiking and, and whatever, riding bikes or whatever you like to do, guys, I mean, it makes it all 100% worth it. I mean, it really does. And, and kids make such great memories with RVs. I know I did. My daughter is, I mean, it's just, it's an awesome way to grow up. It really is. It, it kind of makes you appreciate things and, and, and makes kids put that phone down and the tablets and the video games down and go out and enjoy life. Um, hey guys, I, and I know everybody's different. Everybody's got their own version of RVing and nobody's right, nobody's wrong. But I go out of my way to uh, try to find places that I don't have cell phone service <laughs> or I don't have Wi-Fi. I mean, to me, that's a plus, not a negative. So, um, <laughs> But anyway, that's just me, though. But um, anyway, guys, nice unit. I am going to uh, pause the video for a minute, bring the slides in, because I'm not sure. I didn't set them out, so it'll take me a minute to find the switches and bring them in and find, figure out the procedure. So I'm going to bring them in and show you a video of what it looks like with the slides in, so y'all will be happy with that. I'll get one of my guys to come with me, and if one's available, we'll take it for a test drive. But anyway, this unit is 64.9, NADA is like 71, 72 with no options. Just adjusting for the miles way under book they're over a well over a hundred grand brand new uh it's got nineteen thousand miles nothing to worry about there um for that 64.9 price we do guarantee the roof air to be ice cold we guarantee refrigerator freezer get the operating tent we guarantee slide out to work we guarantee the running and driving to be correct we guarantee the plumbing systems to work, which includes, no, we, we check it for plumbing leaks, we make sure the water heater gets hot, make sure the faucet, spigots, toilet, and all that stuff works. So, you know, anything else, of course, keep our prices down, we leave it to you. Now, obviously, the awning works, so you don't have to worry about that. I've tried that, so the awning does work. Uh, like that light right there, you'll have to put your $2 bulb in there. No big deal. I don't, we don't sweat the small stuff, and you shouldn't either. I mean, you know, any RV you buy, you're going to work on. It doesn't matter if it's new, used, doesn't matter the brand, doesn't matter the type, doesn't matter how much you spend on it, how new it is, how old it is. Any RV you buy, it, it's it's always a labor of love. You're always going to have behind the scenes repairs. It's always three things you're going to be doing to an RV, guys, no matter what it is. It's repairs, maintenance, or upgrade. You're going to do one, two, or three of those things at any given time or place um but hey it, it makes it fun i love uh when i'm not using my rv and i've got a free day at home on sundays i love get, especially when it's pretty out i love getting out there and washing my rv messing around doing some of the little knickknack little repairs or you know stuff that always pops up that you find every time you use one stuff that's like five i always call them five minute repairs and you always got a handful of them at any time um and i did i like doing it i mean some of y'all may not but that's almost like therapy to me it's like working on cars i like getting out working on some of my older cars and stuff that stuff that i know how to work on and uh and i enjoy doing it and 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 it's not i don't cuss at it i don't I run into a problem, I don't cuss or throw tools or nothing like that. I just enjoy the challenge. Especially if it's something I haven't done before. I mean, heck, you got Google, you got YouTube, you got more, plenty of resources to look stuff in on. And, and really, guys, there's not much you can't figure out on an RV. I mean, especially if you got some basic uh, mechanical skills. I'm not saying you got to be a certified RV tech or a mechanic or 
or carpenter or anything like that i mean you can learn a lot of things um i mean it's not rocket science and it's fun to learn i love learning new skills but um but anyway let me pause the video for a minute let's bring these rooms in and i will be right back so hang tight oh by the way this is a haggle free firm i forgot to mention i'll get this out i'll get this perfected one of these days <laughs> i mean i've only done this a few thousand times uh this is a haggle free firm price uh, you do need to come down and inspect it yourself or hire a third party inspection service. We only guarantee those systems that I mentioned earlier for that 69 or 64 9 price. The refrigerator freezer to get operating temp, roof air to get operating temp, the running and driving to be correct, the steps to work, the uh, plumbing systems to work. Um, pretty much it, I think. The slide outs. I guarantee the slide outs to work. Um, the major stuff that can ruin your trip if they don't work. A blown out light bulb is not going to ruin your trip. Or if you've got a skint spot on a cabinet or a drawer that's missing a track, that's not going to ruin your trip, guys. Or, and I'm just throwing stuff that I don't see anything else wrong with. I'm just throwing just some possible things that could be wrong with it. That's not going to ruin your trip. Or a uh, radio not working. The radio does work, but I'm just throwing out examples. Or a TV not working. Um, that's not anything that's going to ruin your trip. And a slide out not working, refrigerator not working, air conditioner not working, plumbing leak, water heater not working. Those can ruin your trip. And that's what we cover, guys. That's what we make sure works when you buy it. And if you got a question about that, give us a call. We'll be trying to explain it a little better than I can. But, guys, that's what we guarantee to work for that price. Now, if you want to get pay eight or $9,000 more, give me a retail price for it. We will do a retail inspection on it. But considering how far back a retail book we're selling it for, that's what we do. Um, and if you want to give retail, we will be more. If you want to pay a seven or eight grand or nine grand more, whatever the difference is between sixty-four nine and the retail price, we will do a full retail inspection. More than happy because we will be making a lot more than we would spend to do that inspection. And you're also welcome to hire a third-party inspection service. They're just a few hundred bucks. They're well worth the money. Um, I think somebody's crazy to buy a used RV without one. And uh, that way you know everything that's wrong with it before you decide to buy it or not buy it. And of course, guys, you know, again, we only cover those systems. So whatever the inspector finds, that's up to you to fix it or not fix it or buy it or not buy it based on that information. Because like I said, the only thing we repair if it doesn't work were those systems that I mentioned earlier. Um, anyway. Got that out of the way. We do take trade-ins. We offer nationwide delivery for $2 a loaded mile one way. We don't charge for the return trip. We um, uh, we do have financing available with approved credit. We don't have any upsells. We don't have any fees besides applicable sales tax. In Georgia residents, there is a $50 to $100 highway impact fee and a $30 to $40 tag and title fee. That's Georgia residents only. It does not apply to out-of-state purchases. And guys, we sell five to six hundred used RVs a year because of deals just like this. So anyway, got that out of the way. Stay tuned, and I'll have the rooms in. And again, call before coming to look with any questions. 706-965-7929 to make sure it's available. All right, guys, I've got the rooms in. And FYI, if you buy this thing or buy one like it, uh, slide out procedure is motor off, park and brake on. Go over here to the panel by the door. Make sure, of course, always make sure there's no obstacles in the way. Uh, slide out one, slide out two. Just press and hold the button, the retract button on both until they're all the way in. And uh, you're good to go. And I did remove the stove top cover. I didn't want it to slide off during the test drive. And just uh, as you walk through it, plenty of space here to move around. Uh, full access to your bathroom. Again, guys, you're not gonna have much access to your bed. I guess technically if you were small like a kid you could probably lay there but that's about it um, <laughs> but anyway you still got access to your bathroom and couch your table booth all that good stuff so 
most your drawers and cabinets and all that so fridge <coughs> microwave kitchen and all that so anyway there you go so hang tight see you from the driver's seat in just one second all right everybody now we're going to test drive this 17 red hawk and uh got my buddy joe again the bow and joe driving show so uh He's gonna take. He's gonna be my cameraman and make sure if y'all have any questions about this, Jayco, to give him a call or a text. And Joe, what's your phone number? It's four two three seven zero two one three one zero. Again, day or night, he's at your disposal. He's a night owl, so don't be scared to text him or call him. All right, and now we're going to go drive down the road got good leg room um even with the slide out in again i'm six four so reminds me a lot of my coach and we'll drive it down the road and we'll see how this j-ride does compared to like a standard uh motor home on e450 if we can get out of here like we always pick the busiest time to do this. has definitely got that throaty muscular sound that I like. That's one thing about driving one with the V10, you, you know from the sound of it what you're driving. They got their own little unique exhaust sound to them. Let's get around this uh, truck up here. Good passing power considering how steep this hill is. I can tell the difference a little bit in the ride because we've got this tar in the road and when I'm hitting it with my tires, I'm not really feeling it um, as bad as I would in most other motorhomes. So I do notice a little bit of difference. As a huge no, but Hey, it always, every little bit helps. And we'll take it up the highway here, see what it does, get on the interstate. Get the cruise control and all of that good stuff. Maybe we can open it up here. back there I don't hear a lot of like stove eyes rattling or anything like that 60 seeing a couple of rocks out of the tires we hit 65 get on the interstate guys that's that's all you can really ask for I'm not getting pulled around by this uh, tanker right here uh, cruise control, which I forgot to check the other day on one. Feels good. Works. I can feel a little difference. Um, again, it's not just a huge difference. Not It's not, it's not like mind-blowing, but it's a noticeable difference with the J-Ride versus a, like a Sunseeker or a or any other brand of uh, Fleetwood or any other brand of Class C, I can tell a little difference in the way it rides and drives. Um, so yeah, I mean, it rides and drives like a 19,000 mile motorhome is supposed to. For a Class C, surprisingly, not much wind noise. So guys, I mean, the transmission shifts good. I'm not pulling to the left or the right. The tires aren't don't feel like they're out of balance. Uh, they're Michelin, so that's a good sign. Uh, brakes, I'm getting off the exit now. Feel good. I'm not 
getting any pulsating in the rotors or anything like that so I don't see any issues with the running and driving of it uh, so again guys if you've got a question about this thing give Joe a call or a text and Joe what's your number one more time it's 423-702-1310 He'll be glad to help you out on this motorhome any way he can. We take trade-ins. Smash me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share on social media. And thanks again for watching and riding along with us. And um, hit that subscribe button. Look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringo, Georgia.